Okay, room one in Venice. Actually, let me just start with the bathroom before because the bathroom <gasps> is so nice. Are you serious? And all of these windows open on to the Grand Canal. Oh. And then this one does too. Wow. So if I've not if I've not already given you a very warm welcome to Venice, hello. I just got here yesterday. I'm still it's it's the lagging the it I'm jet lagged. It's almost 7:30 and I'm just about to go down and get breakfast at the hotel, which we'll see if I'm hoping there's going to be something I can eat there. So I flew in yesterday, Toronto to London and then London to Venice. If I'm not mistaken, I think we did fly over parts of Switzerland and I saw a lot of mountains and I was very, very happy about it. But um, I'm in Venice. This is going to be my second or my first full day here today. It doesn't feel real. I'm thinking what I should do is keep like a travel diary this time or a travel journal that I write in because I would really like to be able to look back and just try to describe better things that I'm seeing 
the streets are, are water. It's just incredibly cool. I took the Vaporetto to get here. I'm gonna try to use some Italian in this vi video vlog. I mean, I've already tried using it out there in the wild. And let me tell you, it's a scary and humbling experience every time it has been. I took the Vaporetto here yesterday. So just from the airport, you go down to the docks, you hop on it and you get here in like half an hour or so. And then you can walk to your hotel. So this hotel is beautiful as you can see the room is just out of this world i'm loving it there's four windows and the first thing i noticed when like i stepped off the vaporetto was that quiet i have my windows open there are no cars no car noise oh my god it's just incredible there's no cars in the city obviously and it's so nice um because it's november it's also much less busy is what I've noticed. There's like crowds around obviously like the Rialto Bridge or um, the bigger touristy attractions. But if you just like take one road over, no one. And it feels like so much of the city is deserted. I mean, today will be my first impression because yesterday I was just way too tired. I was supposed to sleep on the plane to London so that like if I slept pretty much the whole plane ride, I would kind of be able to land in Venice as if my whole night hadn't been taken away but i didn't really sleep so yesterday was just like 24 hours of no sleep so yeah and then i came back to the hotel at like 6 30 last night and i was like oh i'm just gonna take a little nap no bad idea bad idea i woke up at 9 p.m venice time being like oh my god i hope i didn't miss my alarm for breakfast you didn't miss your breakfast alarm it wasn't even wasn't even 10 p.m. Anyway, I just want to take you along with me. The only thing I had like booked for today, the only like ticket related thing, the only thing I have to be on time on for is a tour of the Doge's Palace, and then the rest of the day is just going to be exploring. So, welcome to Venice. <laughs>
excuse the absolute, I don't know if I can fix this right now, absolutely yellow gold lighting going on, but everything in this hotel room is <laughs> yellow and gold and the lights are so yellow. That's gonna have to do, but welcome to the second full day in Venice. I am so tired, I am so tired. <laughs> Yesterday I walked 16 kilometers. I don't know if that's gonna be happening again today, we'll see. Um, and also my jet lag, my body is just out of whack, but it's not even lining up to my home time because this morning at 5 a.m. I was like, you know what, I'm up. I can't sit still. Um, I need to be awake, I can't sleep anymore, which doesn't even make any sense because 6 a.m. here is 12 a.m. there, so midnight. Anyway, so then I just got up and got ready, but yesterday we did a bunch of stuff. We went out early in the morning after breakfast and a lot of the streets were flooding. Um, I don't have any experience here, so I'm not sure if it, you know, does that every morning. I guess we'll see. I've heard November is mostly the time for the aqua alta or high, high water. So I'll see if it's flooding again out there this morning because after breakfast, I think I'm going to head back to St. Mark's Square because um, I went there yesterday. Uh, I cried. I don't know. I wasn't expecting it to evoke emotion in me. It was just something I can't even put into words that I was like, wow. Yesterday I also went into the Palazzo Ducale, the Doge's Palace. Uh, there's a museum in there. It's really beautiful. I got to cross the Bridge of Sighs from the inside. And I mean, it wasn't called the Bridge of Sighs when it was built. Lord Byron coined that, which is cool. Prisoners, because it was used to transport the prisoners to the prison on the other side of the ducal palace he's like they would sigh as they went through so i made sure to sigh as i went through but yeah really really beautiful um really big you can spend a lot of time in the ducal palace for sure like i said yesterday very humbling experience the first few times trying to speak italian to people because it's of course much different than learning the language on your own or even taking a university course or even doing like a private tutoring thing with someone who speaks Italian because they're of course going to be speaking a lot slower and yeah it was just it's taken a little bit of getting used to but I think I'm getting in the hang of it now but it was definitely very humbling the first few tries <laughs> um, for example yesterday at breakfast the waitress was trying to ask me what my room number was and I thought she was asking me if I wanted butter want to give it a good honest shot of talking in italian saying like numero not burro butter and i was like butter <laughs> she was like no after that though throughout the day like i did order pretty much everything in italian all food and coffee and stuff and that went well so but yeah the plan today is to go back to st mark's square and i think to go into the basilica and then at 11 um i booked a gondola ride Wow, I look tired. Also, I look dehydrated. So just wanted to like shout out these shoes that I got like literally the day before. This was like a last minute kind of impulse buy because like I brought my hiking shoes, but I didn't really have very comfortable sneakers to bring with me. And so I just like searched up comfortable walking shoes. Anyway, these are the Dr. Scholl's. I don't even know what they are. I've never had Dr. Scholl's before. And I bought these online extremely last minute and I was so nervous about them, but damn, they are so good. They feel like walking on clouds and like, I walked 16, 16 kilometers yesterday. And like, yeah, my feet were sore, but like nowhere near as sore as they would have been. Like these are, so, I'm so happy I bought these. So anyway, I just wanted to say that because I've been wearing them everywhere. And then obviously I'll wear like my hiking shoes when I go on hikes and stuff. Also, I just look so dehydrated. Like, where, I know you can't answer me right now, but where do you get water in Italy guys? Where's the water? Um, obviously you can go to like the, uh, fast food and buy a bottle of water or at the grocery store and buy a bottle of water, but it feels really hard to drink water here. Obviously very fortunate to just be able to drink water pretty much all the time whenever I want in Canada. And they just, I don't know, they give you water, but here you have to, you have to pay for water. What I was trying to say is that I went to a bookshop yesterday that I really wanted to go to. I had it down on my list. It is Venice's most famous bookshop and it is called Libreria Aqua Alta, so um, high, the high water bookstore. 
and it is so cool. It famously got flooded, I don't know when, probably multiple times, but inside they store their books in bathtubs. There's a gondola inside the bookstore and I got a few things. Most of the books are in Italian, but they have like a French section and English section and uh, apparently they're also famous for cats. I was expecting, here it is, I was expecting to see more cats in Venice. <laughs> I don't know why. I haven't seen any. Apparently there was one cat at the bookstore and they're kind of known for having cats at the bookstore, but um, I guess there used to be a lot of cats on the island and then people were like, whoa, there's too many cats here. Let's like fix them all. And so now I think there's only 2,000 cats in the city, but um, Aqua Alta bookstore is like, pretty well known for their cat stuff. So I didn't get any books, shocking, but there is one more bookstore I wanna go before um, I leave tomorrow. Tomorrow I take the train to Rome. So I just thought I would show you what I got. Okay, so first up I got a bunch of bookmarks. I'm not gonna show you one because I got I got something for Carolyn. So I'm just not gonna show you that in case she's watching. But um, first up I got this bookmark, which has a little orange cat attacking a fish bowl. And it is just, it's just so, it's so cute. And then I got three more bookmarks. So I got a couple of these with cats on them. So these are, I think, stock characters in the Commedia dell'arte, the plays. So I got Pantalone, who's really cute. And then of course I had to get the orange cat, which is the Medico della Peste, so the plague doctor. And they're just, look at them. They're so cute. They're so cute. Um, and that's great because I didn't bring a bookmark with me for the one book, the one book that I packed in my suitcase, which is Italian Journey. Goethe is Italian. Goethe? 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 Goethe! Can you use one of these in there? Um, this is actually great because his Italian Journey, like his travel memoir, starts pretty much in Venice. Um, so those are the two that I got. And then this one they gave out for free. So there's signs like this all over Venice. That is that one. A couple pieces of art. The first is a postcard, but I think I'm just gonna hang it on the wall. And this is what it looks like. It's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. The back opens into a canal and then they have stacks of damaged, waterlogged books everywhere that they use as like stairs. Um, oh, it's just so sad, all those books, all those books waterlogged. And then I got an art print of the bookshop with the black cats so i really really like this this is so so cute really cool place though i would highly highly recommend and then i forget what the other bookshop i want to go to is called today but i'll probably actually get a book there so venice feels i feel like in november or at least right now when it's this cold like a cold like the cold slimy hand of death on your body that's what it feels like out there to me because everything is like damp everything is wet everything is pretty chilly and it just feels like the slimy hands of death. I don't know. Not in a bad way. Anyway, I'm gonna go to breakfast. Okay. Andiamo. 50 meters. Take a left on Ramo del Rio Terra. Okay, ciao, buongiorno. Oh my god. <laughs> it is a little cold, just a little bit. Just a tiny, mini bit. We're on the way to San Marco. Then in 20 meters, take a right on Calle del Calis. The sun has not been out this early yet in the morning. This is really nice and there's no one.
It's so beautiful. Last morning um, in Venice, I have to catch the train to Rome in about half an hour. But yeah, yesterday was another big walking day. I went on a gondola ride that was really cool, and I hit up a couple bookshops, and I bought my first book in Italy. And I, I bought two books anyway. Um, and speaking of cats, I was speaking of cats yesterday, but I saw two cats. One of them at the bookshop and he was so cute. He was a little creamsicle orange man sleeping on top of all the books and another one was sleeping in like a jewelry shop window. My heart. And I also saw my first rat. I've never seen a rat in a city before. So that was just like cool. That was very cool to me. I thought I would do a little mini book haul before I pack these away. This first book is from, I forget what the shop was called. It was more of like a, it wasn't a standalone. I think it was a chain bookstore. I totally forget what it's called. The first book that I got at the bookshop where I saw the cat is The Goodbye Cat by uh, Hiro Arikawa. I've already read Traveling Cat Chronicles. This is the same author. This looks so, I don't know. I don't know. Was I in the mood to cry? I guess. I miss Kelsifer so much. I miss him so much that when I I can't like think about it because I'm gonna cry. I got the Goodbye Cat. I think this is a collection of short stories about cats in our lives. What they do. What are they doing? That against the backdrop of changing seasons in Japan and we meet Spin, a kitten rescued from the recycling bin whose simple needs teach an anxious man how to take care of his own baby. This story is like a colony of wild cats on a holiday island, shows a young boy not to stand in nature's way. It's just a whole bunch of stories about 
cats. Some of them are really, really short. I'm just excited. I'm excited. So that is the first book I got, The Goodbye Cat. I hadn't even heard of this. Like I heard obviously the Traveling Cat Chronicles and I read that. That was really sad, really, really sad. But I hope The Goodbye Cat is maybe like more heartwarming. But at the same time, it's called The Goodbye Cat and that makes me want to cry. At Feltrinelli, the book I got um, is more to do obviously with Venice. So I got Venice and the Anthropocene, an eco-critical guide. And this is edited by Cristina Baldacci um, and a whole bunch of other people. So this is really cool. They had a bunch of this series. Most of them were in Italian. I think this was the only one in English, but yeah, this is a bunch of essays and articles um, about Venice and the way that it relates to the environment. Um, and it, I mean, a lot of the essays take like an eco-critical lens on Venice. So I, it just sounded so interesting. Some of these are on fishing. Some of these are on the canal. Like for example, this essay is called Venice's Marriage to the Sea, Ritual Representation and Environmental Transformation because each year, I don't know if they do it anymore, but um, the doge would literally wed the sea in a ceremony, like with a ring. He would toss a ring into the ocean and be like, see i espouse you so that you're under our dominion like it wasn't a romantic thing really it was like the sea i'm wedding you for you to be under my control um so a lot of this i think most, some of these are like very eco-feminist as well or we have like a lot about the wetlands the lagoons the mud the waterways um we have aqua and mud stratification as a metaphor of time and i really wanted to read this and then we have it split into like different sections so this one is about architecture thankfully i left a lot of room in my big suitcase for a number of books so that is that one and it's just like really it's a nicely bound made book so that is that guy um yeah i think i went to three bookshops here yeah aqua alta feltrinelli and the other one, it was red and white. Like it was very red and white, very like corporate-y. Forget, forget what it was. If anyone knows, you pro someone probably knows. You can put it in the comments, thank you. I'm gonna pack these away and then pack everything up and leave this hotel, which I'm so sad about. I loved Canal Grande. You guys know how I feel about hotels. Hotels are my jam. I love hotels so much. And like this one is very nice. It's very personal. It's a boutique hotel, so it's very small. Um, there's no lobby, it's like you just come in, there's the desk, and then immediately there's like a foyer for dining, and like at breakfast there's only about like 15 seats, so it just feels very small, intimate, cozy, the staff is like a group of seven people who are all incredibly warm and friendly and kind, and it's just been so nice, and obviously the room is like gorgeous. I need to go and then we will catch the train, gotta figure out how to do this train thing. Look at how far down it goes.
join me in the Roman, I'm in the Roman Forum. Oh my God, okay, keep it together, keep it together. Join me as we uh, go through the centuries, not really centuries, we go through the decades with the Roman emperors. Behind me, we have the, the Senate House, the Curious Julia, built by Julius Caesar. Built, <laughs> built by Julius Caesar himself. Smash. It's an absolutely sweltering day. I'm sweating. What I don't understand is that the locals are wearing winter coats. I don't get it. I don't get it. I'm sweating. There's no fence here. This is the form of Caesar. I just really have this like primal urge to start digging. Like, I don't know. I just really, I don't know what I think I'm gonna find. Nothing, it's all been taken, it's all been looted. But I, re I really, I really have stopped myself. Okay. We are in the, the excavations of Hadrian's, no, Trajan's forum. Uh, Trajan, you can identify in, in imagery because he looks like Ross from Friends. But the Roman Empire was at its largest extent that it ever was when Trajan was emperor uh, because he just kept going. where Caligula was potentially stabbed to death. Wow, I don't like this. I don't like this at all. Wow, wow, this is crazy.
Good morning from Rome. So this is day two, full day two in Rome. I haven't really been doing that many updates because it's been absolutely crazy. There is so much to see in Rome that I've just been trying to squeeze everything in because I actually leave tomorrow morning. So today, my last day here is gonna be a little bit crazy, but yesterday was so incredibly cool. Um, but I actually got here the day before. So I've already been here for like a day and a half, but First impression of Rome coming off the train. First of all, the train. The train deserves its own little mention. As someone who lives in North America, <laughs> in Canada, where the trains are really not great. Go first of all, I've never been on a high-speed train. So I don't know how I'm gonna go back because like it was so good. The trains here are just amazing i just can't tell you how different it is for me and how wonderful it is like going from toronto back to my hometown which is like takes over two hours usually a lot more because there's almost always a delay sometimes it takes three hours usually around 200 dollars for like a round trip that is not the case here first of all everything is so easily marked um especially compared to back home because back home at least where i've taken the trains you are not allowed to wait on the platforms you have to wait in a ridiculously long line it's kind of a little bit confusing to find like your train sometimes here first of all so many trains so many tracks everything is so efficient it leaves right on time like literally the minute that you're supposed to leave you're leaving and that never happens back home it's just i'm really going off about these trains but wow like this is what train transportation can be like and the train itself so cool so fast wow a little maybe too fast for me that was like crazy going up to 250 kilometers an hour on a train that was just very 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 cool we got from venice to rome in i think a little under four hours we went of course through like all of tuscany we pulled into the florence station so i did actually end up getting to see like the domes of florence which was so beautiful and then just seeing all of tuscany like seeing it go from very flat a lot of farms a lot of vineyards to like the hills of bologna and outside of florence beautiful and otherworldly positive experience and going back home to take the via rail <sighs> it hurts it hurts it hurts and for me the train travel here is very inexpensive compared to back home so anyway i just wanted to shout out the trains very cool there is actually going to be a strike tomorrow when i'm supposed to be taking the trains there's going to be a apparently very unusual and rare strike but thankfully I got a train that leaves before the strike starts, so it's all good. Pulling into Rome, first of all, very busy, very overwhelming. Um, I thought Toronto was like crazy. No, no, no. Obviously got to the hotel. This is the Hotel Colby. Colby. Um, it's right next to the Palatine Hill, which is so nice. So it's very close to everything. It's much quieter here. Honestly, it hasn't been too busy. Like yesterday, I went to the Colosseum in the morning not crowded like you could just walk around pretty freely um if you go in the morning but like we didn't even go that early we went when it opened at 8 30 and it really wasn't too bad so we went to the coliseum and then right after to the forum and that's where i spent most of the time the forum is absolutely huge i mean the whole thing isn't the forum it's like the archeolo archaeological park oh wow that was like a dream come true that was an absolute dream come true i just can't tell you like seeing everything seeing augustus's house seeing the different temples seeing trajan's column wow what i want to say is that it takes a lot of imaginative work to piece together what you're seeing also to imagine what it would have looked like because so much of it is in ruins and of course all the marble has been stripped off everything is pretty much piled on top of one another not only during um, the ancient Roman period where people would just kind of sometimes tear down each other's buildings, like tear down Nero's big house when Vespasian built the Colosseum, so everything's kind of just mumbo-jumbo on top of each other, but then of course after the fall of Rome, everything just kind of went like crazy over all of the buildings, so then you have modern stuff, you have medieval stuff, you just have so much stuff piled on top of each other, so it takes a lot of like mind work to sort out what you are seeing, but it was just, yeah, probably favorite thing I've done 
since coming here has been going to the forum. For Rome, this is cold because most people who live here are like wearing winter coats, autumn and winter coats, which for me is crazy because I'm sweating in like a t-shirt. I don't know how they're doing it, but I guess, I guess you guys must be used to like very, 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 very warm. But for me, this is, this is very warm and it's very humid, very humid here. So I'm just like, how are you wearing scarves and hats morning i am gonna go to the baths of caracala and then after that i'm gonna be going to some catacombs and then i'm gonna be biking the appian way <laughs> <laughs> 